When introducing Bill 23, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, Steve Clark, said, the problem is clear. There simply aren't enough homes being built. And the solution is equally clear. We need to get more homes built faster. But if it's all clear to the minister, the debate that's ensued suggests that it's not as clear to others. So let's find out more. Here's Steve Clark. He is the PC MPP for Leeds Grenville, Thousand Islands, and Rideau Lakes. And we welcome you back to our studio. It's good to have you here. Glad to be back. Thanks. I guess I got to say two things off the top. Number one, before we get started, I got to do this full disclosure thing in the interest of transparency. It's worth noting my brother is a home builder and is developing a parcel of land that was just removed from the green belt in Grimsby, east of Hamilton. We put that on the record, number one. Sure. Number two, every time we get a cabinet minister here, I get lots of advice from people about, about the need to sort of beat them up. And I just want to say to everybody, my job is not to beat them up. My job is to ask the questions that you want asked. So we'll do that in a civilized fashion as we always do on this program. Good to go? I'm good to go. The government has a goal of getting 1.5 million homes built over the next decade. Does your plan distinguish what kinds of homes those 1.5 should be? Social housing, market rates, rentals, owned condos, whatever. Yeah, it does, Steve. And, and we were very clear right from the start, right from the very first housing supply action plan, more homes, more choice, which was the last time I came on the program. We put a plan in place that would build all types of housing, every type, shape, form, price range. Uh, over the last three years, we've been very responsive to municipal needs. We've spent uh, about $4.4 billion on our community housing system through various iterations of the social services relief fund and COVID supports. Um, but we still have a housing shortage. And the housing supply action plan that we're promoting, the, the most recent one, More Homes Built Faster, builds upon the success, but it really recognizes the urgency of the housing supply action plan. We went to the, the people in the election in June, talked about our plan, which was a, a very aggressive plan to build 1.5 million homes over the next 10 years by 2031. And uh, it's, it's gonna cause and, and, and cause us as a government to make some very bold um, decisions. Well, let's see how bold, because you won't be surprised to hear, we cover this story from time to yes. time on this program. And a lot's been said in the media, of course, about why you decided to open the green belt after initially saying that you wouldn't. Last week, we had the mayor of Newmarket, Mayor Taylor, on the program, who asked the following. Sheldon, if you would. If this was about housing affordability, truly about housing affordability, I don't support taking land into the green belt. But if you do, and if you're going to do it, philosophically, you believe it's the right thing to do, why are there not density targets tied to it? Why are there not transit-oriented development requirements tied to it? And why, if you're handing billions of dollars over to landowners in one a legislative change, why were there not housing affordability criteria and targets directly tied to that land? Answer, please. There were. Um, I was surprised at, uh, at Mayor Taylor's comments because he insinuated that we, we didn't provide targets. We made it crystal clear when we made the announcement that we expect to have as a minimum 50,000 homes being built from those 15 properties. The fact that we made it crystal clear that as a minimum 10% of those units had to be affordable and attainable. And we very clearly said to those 15 um, um, development companies, the fact that they needed to work with local councils, they needed to create uh, complete communities, they needed to ensure that um, at, a, at a minimum that they reflected uh, the priorities of those communities, which, which aren't just single family homes. So exactly, and then the final thing um, was we said that if there's not substantial completion uh, in terms of, of housing starts on these properties, that I would return them back to the green belt, we'd repost them, we'd put them back in just as we posted to get them out. Let me dive deep on this one number here. 10% had to be affordable. How are you defining affordable housing here? Well, uh, in, in, in More Homes Built Faster, there, there is a definition that says that affordability is 80% uh, of the rental uh, price um, that had to be 80% of the market rent. Uh, on a sale price, it had to be 80% of the average sale price um, and guaranteeing that the development company made it affordable for 25 years. That's in the act, More Homes Built Faster. However, we're open, as I said, at the uh, Roma Conference. Rural, earlier, rural, rural Ontario Municipal. Rural Ontario Municipal Association, as I said earlier in the week. Mm -hmm. um, we want to work with municipalities. We want to ensure 
that the changes that we've put forward in Bill 23, where we've said we want to incent uh, affordable, attainable, um, inclusionary zoning, nonprofit, uh, and purpose-built rental, we want to we want to make sure that we get the definition right. The last thing okay, we can, can I... afford to do as a government is to have an affordability definition that doesn't fit our municipal partners. So let's let's uh, go a little deeper on that then. If if it's if if you're using market rates right now to define affordable, as opposed to a percentage of income, which it has traditionally been. Are we getting further ahead or further behind here? Because most people's definition of what's considered affordable has a relationship to how much money they make, not what the market says. Yeah, but, but I also think that it's very important that... Is that a fair we, point? You're going to give me that? I'm going to give it to you. But, okay. I, but I also want to counter by saying um, the Housing Affordability Task Force that the government appointed, that I appointed, that gave me their report almost a year ago, mm -hmm. talked about the costs of doing business. It, it, it takes too long to build housing in Ontario and the costs are too high. The average uh, uh, extra costs that fees and other charges add to a house in the GTA is about $116,900. That's too much. It ultimately results in a 20-year mortgage for a young couple to be another $800 on their mortgage. That's too high. So the principle of Bill 23 is to lower those uh, input costs uh, so that it's not that as expensive and ultimately, the hope is that the cost for housing would be cheaper. So yes, we have to continue to work with municipalities on what the definition of attainable and affordable. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that everyone's clear on, on the discounts for purpose-built rental, the discounts for nonprofit, because we've got some great nonprofit partners out there that want to build affordable homes, that want to make sure people can afford that mortgage. Um, but, but again, we've got a severe problem. Sure. Well, let me let me follow up on the municipal partner angle because I mean I heard you say it at Roma the other day. You've said it during our conversation here today. You want to work with municipalities to make sure that you guys all get to the promised land. However, we have heard Mayor Taylor was one. We have have had others on this program as well, who uh, don't love the fact that you don't appear to be. I don't know if listening is the right word, but taking into account the suggestions that they've got. Uh, we know in the city of Hamilton, for example, you've overridden plans as it relates to uh, the boundary there about where development can or cannot take place. How are you going to get municipal partners on board when you disagree with them and or are fighting with them on such key issues? Well, part of our job is to ensure that we've got a plan in place. And I've, I've, been, I've been very clear with mayors when we've had meetings with either myself or uh, in conjunction with the premier, like the meetings we had uh, early in, in 2021 uh, and 2022, you know, we, we need to ensure that official plans, which are the, really the playbook for uh, our cities and towns and townships and regions, we need to ensure that they reflect the plan that we took to the people. The fact that we want to make sure everyone has uh, all of the tools that they need to get 1.5 million homes. The, using Hamilton as an example, the council overruled some very thoughtful recommendations from their staff that we changed as part of You're the official plans. You're a politician. You would acknowledge that an elected council has the right to overrule staff. But again, staff advise. But again, I've got a challenge that is very difficult to deliver on. Mm -hmm. 1.5 million homes over a 10-year period, extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. The best year we had in our province's history was in 2021. Best in 30 years, 100,000 starts. Last year, we're just under 100,000. You can do the math. You're better in math than I am. We need at least 150,000 starts per year, and that's not with the new immigration targets that we know since the federal government has announced that the majority of those new Canadians are going to come to Ontario. Yep. So yep. we need to act quickly and decisively, and I acknowledge that, uh, that some of our municipal partners might feel we're moving a little faster mm -hmm. than they're able to handle. Okay, we heard from Mayor Taylor a second ago. I want to play a clip from another mayor. This is, this is a tweet, rather, from Aurora's Mayor Tom Marrakis, who said, the current provincial policy approach does not account for the reality that housing options and affordability needs differ across communities, as do the solutions needed to address these issues. And those solutions need to be grounded in evidence-based policy. Is he onto something? Well, uh, we had a, a, a panel of experts 
our Housing Affordability Task Force that looked at the continuum of housing. And as I said earlier, it takes too long to get shovels in the ground. The mix is, is, is not what we need right now. So we embedded into more homes built faster, uh, a regime of development charge, either elimination or reduction that will incent the type of housing that mayors like Mayor Maracas, Mayor Taylor and others who have been on your show uh, have indicated needs to get done. But we have to acknowledge, and I think Mayor Maracas needs to acknowledge that all three levels of government need to have a role in this. It's just not a role at the federal and provincial level to do this financially. We need to all have a, some skin in the game. And, and quite frankly, you know, a mayor has to be able to look that young family in the face and give them some hope. Right now, some of the mayors are not giving that young family hope that they'll ever have a home that meets their needs and their budget. Do you think he I is? Want, I want to make sure that we give them that hope. And, Do you think and, he is? Well, I, you know, I, I think it's the average house price in Aurora is pretty high but, still. But it's challenging uh, when some mayors, um, you know, already indicate that they believe taxes are going to increase because of more homes built faster. Mm -hmm. When when they know that we're still collaborating with them on making them whole, on assessing the actual cost, and and at Roma, the Rural Ontario Municipal Association Conference this week, I talked about the importance of having a select group of municipalities audited to make sure that some of the claims that mayors like Mayor Maracas make are actually true. And, and you know, the mayor of Waterloo was on your show last week, mm -hmm. uh, used a, an entire development charge figure, uh, multiplied it by five, and said that that was the revenue that was going to be lost for the community. That's not true. That is... That is it's that not is, true because... It's not true because not every development in that community is going to be eligible for a development charge exemption. Right. So when a mayor uses their entire D.C. budget and says they're going to lose all this money, that's not factually correct. And, and again, my pledge this week to municipalities and my pledge to them earlier um, this year was that we wanted to work with them. We need to assess the actual... Um, shortfall that they um, are projecting. Just so people are clear here, because you're not exempting development charges on all development. No, it's no, on no. some development. Some development. But they are making, in your judgment, they're making it sound like it's a blanket S some statement. Are. Yeah. Some are. Some are. Some aren't. You know, yeah. there. I, I think the vast majority of municipal officials we met with face to face this week were were very open. Um, in fact, some of them wanted us to go farther on things, for example, like purpose built rental. Where, where a, a council you know, really needs that. But I, I want to also make something clear that deferring and exempting development charge, this isn't something that is a new concept that I just rolled out of bed the other day and thought of myself. Municipalities have been doing this for years. I, I, can, I can point you in the direction of many municipalities who are incenting affordable housing or incenting nonprofit housing like Habitat for Humanity Homes who are already doing exactly what is in more homes built faster. Um, it's just not being made mandatory as I'm doing with this piece of legislation. The question might be, why am I making it mandatory? It's because of the severity of the housing supply crisis. Everything we're doing, we're doing with a lens of how we can get shovels in the ground faster and how we can have a plan in place, given a very challenging economy right now, that when the economy takes an uptick, that we can get shovels in the ground and actually get those starts up over 100,000 a year. Okay, why don't, uh, where am I gonna follow up here? I wanna ask you about another provision in Bill 23. If I understand it, it allows all houses in Ontario to be converted into triplexes, in theory. Do I understand this correctly? The square footage and height can't change even if it's a bungalow. Is that right? Yeah, so the Housing Affordability Task Force talked about um, four units as of right. Um, we started with one of my previous housing supply action plans. We uh, allowed uh, municipalities to put policies in place to create like a granny suite in the basement or a laneway home uh, or other ancillary building, a dwelling unit on top of the property. Mm -hmm. What we found was two years later, not very many municipalities took advantage of that. So we, we decided to, to pick a midpoint between what the housing uh, affordability task force recommended and what we tried to encourage through a previous 
piece of legislation, and that's why we, ch we chose the three. So we, we wanted to keep the same footprint uh, in the neighborhood, but you know, really try to incent the opportunity to create that additional apartment, uh, that, uh, that addition um, that would be a, a, another dwelling unit, or in some cases, uh, like cities like this, uh, a laneway or garden home that someone could. This intensification, I think, provides uh, a real unique opportunity in communities, both large and small. Will it happen, that, though? Is it actually going to happen, I, this I, intensification? I, I'm hopeful and optimistic that it will. We, we saw when I, when I gave municipalities the right to do it on their own that they were painfully slow in doing it. Um, I, I think that the decision we've made uh, as part of More Homes Built Faster will, will get it done. And again, we went to the people and said that under the leadership of Premier Ford, a re-elected government, um, all, of our, uh, par all of our team, we were going to have a housing supply action plan every year of our four years. So that's really the piece that our team... No, you know, I get it. You got re-elected, and in fact, the opposition has given you some political cover on this. They want you to do this too. I mean, Mike Schreiner's, Mike Schreiner was on our program when? Just the other day. Uh, proposing Bill 44, which would allow for four stories in some case, and, and in transit areas, six stories even. Um, six to 11, I think. If it's got, I mean, it seems to have broad political support, so why not power forward with it? Well, I, you know, I think some of our municipal colleagues just, just aren't there yet. And, and I said that when the Housing Affordability Task Force tabled their report last February. We, we made it very clear that that report is going to be our long-term roadmap as a government. Um, every year of our mandate, we are going to continue to implement those measures. But I, I was very open with Ontarians last February that said our municipal partners just aren't ready. And I think the last bill has sort of proved that uh, I was right. In which case, I think this is a fair question, um, you know, did you bring a knife to a gunfight? And by that I mean, you know, you've described this as a crisis, the situation, both in terms of Quantity and affordability, do you believe you, and, and I keep hearing you use the word bold, but you know, have your actions truly been bold enough given what you seem to be suggesting we're facing right now? Well, all of our team, and I, and I mean you know, our associate minister, Michael Parsa, my parliamentary assistant, Kevin Holland, all three of us uh, are all focused on measures that we can do to improve uh, housing opportunities in Ontario. There's not one silver bullet. There's not one measure that the government of Ontario can do that just magically solves the housing supply crisis. For sure. So we need to build upon it. How long uh, will it take? Uh, you know, I, th I think it's a... I can't really say how many years I think it will take, but I do believe that the next 10 years are going to be critical for our government, our municipal partners, and also the federal government uh, to get a plan in place that is collaborative, connected, and um, we're going to continue as a, as a provincial partner to, uh, to, to work with both sides. You spent a lot of time working on the supply side of housing, telling us you want to get stuff built. The feds, who are more responsible, I guess, on the demand side of things, have there been any discussions with them about, for example, immigration targets related to new housing, that kind of thing? Yeah, we, not, not on the immigration targets, like as it relate to housing. We, we know, you know, the Premier's been very open uh, that he feels the 500,000 new Canadians that uh, we'll welcome to the country, the majority of them are going to be coming to Ontario. And, come here. And, and we already have a, a housing supply crisis. My, my task force last year uh, picked that 1.5 million homes. CMHC shortly after said that it might be closer to 1.7. So again, it, 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 it's a challenge that the government needs to, to take head on. We do need a, a federal partner. Um, do you have one? Uh, you know, we do. I, 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 think there's a, I think there's an opportunity for um, the Federation to understand that on the housing space, um, we have a bit of a, a challenge. Uh, this isn't something that a 38% per capita uh, ratio is going to fix. I, I go to meetings with my federal, provincial, and territorial colleagues. Our core housing needs, Steve, is so much higher than every other province and territory. When we start talking about um, some of the initiatives we're doing, even something like my by name list that I'm working with my service managers to identify, you know, people who are homeless or at risk of homeless, our core housing need is just so much higher than everybody else. And and the challenge we've had 
uh, is getting the, the federal government to recognize that. Obviously, my provincial and territorial colleagues aren't enthused about they're not sympathetic giving, to your situation giving me at all. some of their money yeah. so that I can deal with it. But I do think that it's a that it's a challenge, especially on some of the new programs the federal government are rolling out, the accelerator fund, mm -hmm. which is critical to connect with municipalities. And you heard earlier this week um, their their concern about infrastructure, but also the rent to own program, uh, the purpose built rental side. Uh, I, we really need to to dive in on how much the federal government is is providing. And I really do think if, regardless of what they do with the other national housing strategy dollars, if we could get an enhanced uh, intake for rent to own or, or the accelerator fund, it would go very far in terms of helping municipalities and the province build more affordable housing and more affordable rent. I'm going to ask you one last question. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll give you the heads up. This is going to be a bit of a nasty question, but here we go. I appreciate that in your zeal as Minister of Housing, you want to get stuff built. There are currently at least two that I know of investigations underway by the Integrity Commissioner and the Auditor General as to whether or not, in your zeal to get stuff built, you gave a heads up to rich developers in York Region so that they could purchase land that was in the Green Belt with the knowledge that it would soon be out of the Green Belt and therefore developable. I know you've answered this question outside the studio, but I want to give you a chance to speak to it on the record here. Absolutely not. Absolutely not, Steve. At no time did that, uh, mm -hmm. that uh, allegation happen. Uh, I'm pleased that the Integrity Commissioner dismissed uh, the Green Party um, complaint against the Premier and I that uh, he felt that we benefited financially, which the Integrity Commissioner dismissed outright. Yes, there's another Integrity Commissioner investigation. Uh, and an Auditor General um, um, value for money audit. Mm -hmm. and, and, and at no time did we tip anybody off, to use the, the, the words that the Premier said. Uh, but I want to be clear that the best value for money on the, what we've done as a government is to make sure that those 50,000 homes at a minimum get built. We need them. Ontarians need them. Young families need them. And we need to ensure that we continue to do everything we can to get shovels in the ground so that we can provide better housing affordability for our province. You're confident that denial you just gave us is not going to come back to bite you on the backside. I, I, I am confident, Steve. Very confident. That's Steve Clark. He's the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing and the PC member for Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands, and Rideau Lakes, the longest riding name in the province. Minister Clark, always good to have you here. Thanks, Thanks so Steve. much for taking our questions. Thank you so much. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.